You know, how many He told me to make you laugh and not let you tear up. So before I pray, I'm going to try to set the tone a little bit for the celebration. Now, I met you guys maybe two and a half years ago. Uh, first time y'all came to class, I think you probably had your hat on and I ba- went back and, and greeted y'all and enjoyed meeting y'all and I thought, I hope they come back. Well, the next week y'all came back. So I was very, really excited to see what hat you were going to wear. And I went back there and I hugged Ruby and... Ruby, when I hugged her, I'll never forget that moment because she looked up at me and she had that smile. She just kind of cocked her head and looked up at me and she giggled and giggled with her whole body when she, when she giggled. And it just made me feel wonderful. And so every week when y'all would come back, I would look for your hat and I would go hug her. And that two seconds where I got to hug her just set my day for me. She just had a way of doing that uh, when, when she met you. And she had, when we went to see her in the hospital, she had that same look on her face. She looked just like that in the hospital. I was amazed that, that she looked the way she did in, in those conditions. And then when you called me and told me that she had departed, the very first thing that came in my spirit was I saw Jesus hugging her. And I saw her looking up at him, you know, with her head cocked and her eyes shining and that grin and that giggle she had when, when she got to meet him for the first time. So I knew exactly what it was like when she got there and walked in to meet him. But you know, you move forward to December of 22 when you had your first medical emergency and, and you, were, you were injured, well actually were the, the miracle of that. And then in January you were at the house when the guys from Peru were down here, you, you and, and, uh, and, and Ruby were there now you're, you're sitting in the chair holding court, and Ruby's playing with the girls, and she's going around talking to everybody. And I remember saying, hey, Jaime, you wanna, I got some Mexican Coke. And you said, what's that? And I was like, come on, brother, stop pulling my leg. You know what a Mexican Coke is. And looking back on that, that was so stereotypical of me. But the fact that half my family is Mexican, I'm going to use that as my disclaimer. And you said, no, I really don't know. So I went and got you one. And a little while later, you told me how much you enjoyed it. Y'all had an appointment to go to. So y'all, y'all left, and y'all were gone. And I happened to think, you know, I've got a whole half case still in the garage. So I called you up and said, hey, i got a half case. I mean, if you, wanna, if you want it. And I'm thinking I would bring it to you the next day. And you're, you said, no, we'll come, we'll come get it. It's like, okay. So I went outside and, and waited on you. And, and I see, and Ruby's driving. And I, I see her, and I hear her coming in the Explorer, and she's getting every horse, of every horsepower she got out of that vehicle, man. She was coming. And she came, she came up, zooming up the driveway, popped the, popped the back. You know, she got that big smile on her face. I, I set the cokes in there, things down before I can even get out of the way. And four horses ahead, she was gone. You know, we're off to the next appointment. And that, that was just Ruby and everything. Uh, and that's one of the cool things about her that I loved uh, so much. And then December 23, the next time a medical emergency, you, know, you, you told me that you had broken your ribs, and so I sent you a funny to make you laugh. Okay? And my disclaimer on that deal is if, if I had not known you were a Marine, homie, I wouldn't have done that to you. But Marine and Marine, I had to do that to you, okay? There's just no, no way around it. And then I'd call you up and say, hey, homie, have you heard this one? you say, no. And I'd tell you, and I'd hear you laugh, and you'd go, oh, oh, then you'd laugh some more. And I kept sending you jokes and, and things like that. Well, one day Ruby calls me up, and she goes, Mike, yes, ma'am. She said, you got to stop making homie laugh because he'll laugh and he'll cry then he'll laugh some more you're hurting him mike uh, and i said yes ma'am I, i'm sorry she goes you gonna stop for me i said yes ma'am i'll, I'll stop but can i send him one more before i do <laughs> and she said okay but stop and i said yes ma'am I, i'll stop ruby and that's just the way the way she oh she closed this way so she closed out the conversation with i love you she said, I love Becky. I hope, I hope you're okay. God bless you. And it wasn't the Southern will, will bless your heart. It was a genuine, I love you, and I love Becky. And how are things? I hope things are going well for you. 
and then you know she's off off to the next thing. And I guess the moral to that, all of that is, there's some Mexican cokes back there for you, and the rest of the family, Jaime's got dibs on them first, okay? So make sure you get one. Okay. So let me open this up in prayer. Let's, let's invite the Lord in. Let's invite the Spirit in and, and have some celebration. Father, thank you so very much for Ruby's life. She was so special to me, so special to all of us. Lord, let your Spirit indwell this room. Let your Spirit fill this room because that's what she would want. She wants us to celebrate her because she was always so happy. She was always smiling. She always gave me all of herself whenever I was around her. Lord, hold my brother together. Uh, hold his heart close to, to you and, and let him celebrate and, and not hurt for this, this little time that we have where we can be together to celebrate her, Lord. Come, in, come into his father because this is a time of love and celebration because we know where she is. She's not gone. She's just on her deployment waiting on us to get there to see her again. And, and we're going to get to talk to her about she's going to get to show us around if we want her to, Lord, and that's, that's even cooler. Thank you, Lord. Thank you here for the people that are here uh, to celebrate her. So thank you for Jaime, my love for him. And just hold us up, hold us together, and strengthen us and be here with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't you get 
it shine on me, lift up your song. You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a heart. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ is my firm foundation. Everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? joy. I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. Cause I feel my life on Jesus. And he's
Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, and everything around me is shaken. Oh, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, because he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? He won't, that's right, we can sing and believe that. He won't, he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. Your name stands 
Ruby Elena Lopez was born April 17, 1958. She was born in Tequisate, a municipality in Guatemala, and lived in the capital city most of her life. Ruby studied medicine, and she earned a university degree of doctor and surgeon from La, La Universidad de San Carlos de Guatemala in November 26, 1985. This was a perfect use of her calling and her character. She was smart, observant, she loved to help people, and she was nurturing. She practiced medicine at Hospital Roosevelt in Guatemala City, Hospital de Antigua, IGSS, uh, Instituto, sorry, I don't speak Spanish, so I'm trying, um, Instituto Guatemalteco Seguridad so Social, and Hospital General San Juan de Dios in the capital city. Uh, in 1991, the U.S. Embassy granted her a visa to come to the United States with her eight-year-old son, Kenny, and she continued her practice at the Clinica Medica General in, um, that's one, uh, in private home care, working for the elderly with Fidelity Nursing Services, Inc., and as an EMT with Goodwill. In 1995, she met and married her husband, Jaime Vergara, and if you've heard this story, you know that it is a divine, ordained love story. Um, she had said that when she heard his steps walking toward her to take the empty seat beside her, she knew that he was her husband, and he knew that he liked her legs. <laughs> Months later, they were married, um, I wrote this eulogy uh, with my dad, so um, I'm speaking more to their relationship as I continue. But um, Ruby was a good wife. She was a partner who made, maintained, and stewarded their household. She cared very much for her husband, cooking his meals. She was a great cook, um, but also having to put him on a diet sometimes to improve his health. She would pack his lunch for him for work. She kept the house clean, and she planted a garden. She was a decorator. She turned the house into a home. She was a painter. My dad says one day he came home, and all the walls were painted, and she did that herself. Um, she painted the kids' rooms, and I don't know if you ever saw Alex's room, but it had this cool star solar system thing. So she, she was a painter and a contractor, my dad says, um, that she assisted with the addition to the home which later became her nursery. Um, she hid money everywhere, squirreling it away for a rainy day or, or a vacation. She loved a bargain and was not ashamed to save a dollar. She was a planner. Ruby was a good mom. She was a teacher and an advocate for her kids. She 
she protected her kids, but at the same time, she prepared them. She prepared them for life. She was fun, and she loved taking family vacations. She was hospitable, and she welcomed, she welcomed everyone into her home, and more than that, into the family. While she may have technically only had four kids, there were so many others that she was a mother too. The cousins, the kids that she cared for, they were all her babies. She loved pictures, and in every picture, as you can see, she has a beautiful smile with red lipstick. If a picture is worth a thousand words, then her albums tell her life story. She was a godly woman, and while her whole life was a testament to this, these last few months, her faith was magnified. As a doctor, when she saw her x-ray, she knew her diagnosis, but she didn't give in to fear. Instead, she prayed, she praised, she asked the Lord for more time, and although it wasn't as much time as we wanted, it was enough time. Her last days were spent with family. Her house was full of loved ones, and her room was full of chairs. And everyone had a seat. Ruby sadly passed away March 3rd, 2024, at her home in Alito, Texas, surrounded by family. She was 65 years old. Ruby was preceded in death by her parents, Victorino Lopez Palacios and Amparo Revolorio Fuentes de Lopez, and she is survived by her beloved spouse, Jaime, and children, Kenneth Roberto, daughter-in-law Aaron, Alejandro Jose, Priscilla Nicole, stepdaughter Nat Natalie Jean, that's me, <laughs> Her grandchildren, Logan James, Maverick Mark, Emery, Emery Lee, her boys, Andrew and Adam, and siblings, Victor Lopez, Edwin Eliezer Lopez, Ruth Naomi Lopez, Nettie Lopez, Hilda Westendorf, George Raul Lopez, Luis Roberto Lopez, Byron Lopez, Jimenez Lopez, no, Jimmy Lopez, Julio Lopez, and Erica Marilian Lopez. Ruby has 23 nieces and nephews. Ruby was a doctor, a wife, a mother, a sister, and an aunt. Again, she was a teacher, an advocate, a cook, a gardener, a talker, and a woman of God. She was strong. She was loving. She was a faithful steward. Everyone who knew her would say that they could have loved her more. But we are blessed to say that she loved us with all she had. Um, at this time, I wanted to read uh, from Proverbs. Um, my dad says that when he reads Proverbs 31, he's reminded of his wife, which makes sense because I asked Ruby once uh, what her favorite scripture was or book of the Bible, and she said it was the Proverbs. So I'm going to read from Proverbs 31, 10 through 31, and this section of the Bible is called A Hymn to a Good Wife. And a couple notes, um, scriptures are highlighted, and these are the ones that my dad, these are the ones that describe Ruby for my dad. The first one, a good woman is hard to find and worth far more than diamonds. Her husband trusts her without reserve and never has reason to regret it. Never spiteful, she treats him generously all her life long. She shops around for the best yarns and cottons and enjoys knitting and sewing. She's like a trading ship that sails to faraway places and brings back exotic prizes. She's up before dawn, preparing breakfast for her family and organizing her day. She looks over a field and buys it, then, with money she's put aside, plants a garden. First thing in the morning, she dresses for work, rolls up her sleeves, eager to get started. She senses the worth of her work, is in no hurry to call it quits for the day. She's skilled 
in the crafts of home and hearth, diligent in homemaking. She's quick to assist anyone in need and reaches out to help the poor. She doesn't worry about her family when it snows. Their winter clothes are all mended and ready to wear. She makes her own clothing and dresses in colorful linens and silks. Her husband is greatly respected when he deliberates with the city fathers. She designs gowns and sells them, brings the sweaters she knits to the dress shops. And these last verses are highlighted. Her clothes are well made and elegant, and she always faces tomorrow with a smile. When she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say, and she always says it kindly. She keeps an eye on everyone in her household and keeps them all busy and productive. Her children respect and bless her. Her husband joins in with words of praise. Many women have done wonderful things, but you have outclassed them all. Charm can mislead and beauty soon fades. The woman to be admired and praised is the woman who lives in the fear of God. Give her everything she deserves. Adorn her life with praises. You made a covenant with me, signed by the blood that still speaks. Now I'm forgiven, I'm called righteous, only clean. There on the cross of Calvary, you gave it all to purchase me. You are the Savior and the God who set me free.
For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God So my life you have been faithful No my life you have been so so good With every breath that I am able Oh I will see of the goodness of God You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. We sing one more song. I'd like to invite you to stand if you want to sing. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. Part of my day, I've been held in your head. The moment that I wake up, till I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God 
love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. I can sing and believe this all my life. In all my life you have been faithful. In all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness, God, oh, I will sing. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Natalie, I heard the story of how. Jaime and Ruby came together a little differently. A little differently. Same story, just a little different. I asked Ruby, how did y'all meet? And she said that she prayed that the Lord would send her the person that sat by her at church. And it was Jaime, and she said, oh, no, not him. <laughs> of course... You came on, I guess, Jaime. I enjoyed uh, listening to all the stories that you guys shared with me about Ruby. I enjoyed the fun you've had. And I must admit, I, I've seen lots of slide presentations. And you guys got some joy. You got some laughter. It was obvious. You have got some peace. And it was very, very uh, wonderful to see that. I love the story that um, you shared about going to the observatory in California. And, uh, and I said, yeah, that, I, I, I haven't seen that, but I've seen some of the houses around that and how big and beautiful they are. And uh, a lot of rich people live there. And the comment was made, yeah, every time we went there, the kids often would say, look how rich these people are. And y'all would always say, but we're rich. We're wealthy. And I must admit, as I watched the presentation, I couldn't help but think, they're rich. They got more money than Elon Musk. They're, they're experiencing the best things of life. I enjoyed uh, Jaime sharing with me about Ruby. He said she always took care of me. She had my back. And uh, she was an awesome cook, as Natalie has said. And she had a gift that if Jaime was out at a business dinner or luncheon or something, and there was something in that dinner that he really liked, he would take it home to her. And she was able to taste it and copy it. And she was able to develop the recipe for whatever it was that Jaime enjoyed. And, and that's pretty unique. That's pretty special. Except for Menudo. She struggled with menudo. Uh, she would try recipe after recipe, and she says, how's that? And 
How many go, hmm. Now, she didn't have menudo in her home country, and so she wasn't uh, uh, used to menudo and how to make it. And so uh, she would pack his lunch, and he would go off to, to work, of course. And she packed menudo one day, and he gets to the office, and he tastes it, and he goes, oh, my, now there we go. That's it. And she and he handed it out to some of the employees at the work spot, and, and they all said, oh, this is great. This is wonderful. And so he goes, and he picks up the phone, and he calls Ruby, and he says, Ruby, you did it. That's it. Keep that recipe. You have nailed it. This is the best we know. I mean, you know. I mean, I'm so happy. And she said, it's from a can. <laughs> so there's always things that can't be challenged. I, I love the story Kenneth shared with us about uh, when they first moved to California. And he was a small boy. And they lived in the projects. And uh, there were some kids kind of harassing Kenneth a little bit, and uh, Ruby went out to them with a crowbar and straightened that up, and from that point on in the projects, Ruby had everyone's respect, and they, they let Kenneth be. Uh, Priscilla shared with me that uh, if her friends were going through some problems, and perhaps either they weren't able to talk with their mom or uh, they didn't have a mom really connected with them in their life. She used these words, I loved to take them to mom. I love to take them to mom. And she went on to share with us that mom would listen, she would advise, she would counsel, and her home was always open to anyone that had needs. She cared for her own children, and she also cared for others as well through the years. Now, you may have noticed that in the print up for today's uh, memorial, the scripture is there for 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. That scripture says, For no one can lay a foundation other than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And when I saw that verse, I went, that's exactly the verse that we need to talk about today. Verse for all of us, but I really think that she is a wonderful example of this verse. A wonderful example. So the whole passage here for this wonderful foundation that Jesus lays for us begins in verse 10. Paul says to us, according to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest. For the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed. It will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Speaking about... The judgment of believers, the judgment for rewards, the judgment for um, their life, what we have done, how we did it, our, our actions, our behavior, our works. Not for salvation, but definitely for rewards. And if you look at this scripture, you see something that I think is, is quite evident. There's a foundation that's strong. There's a foundation that is laid perfectly. It's a foundation in building terms where the pillars go way down and connects all the way down to the blue shell here in Texas or that rock, that hard rock, that place where uh, it is going to be the strongest foundation for the home or the, uh, the office or whatever is being built. Now, when everything in life 
is going well, this foundation is often taken for granted. Now, very, very, very few people go through life without their foundation being tested, right? Most of us go through hard times. Most of us go through life and we experience things that requires a strong foundation. And if the, strong, if the foundation is not strong, then we do experience more than we can handle. And there's a shaking of the life. When that foundation is shook, oftentimes things like fear is, is, the, is the layer of life. Uh, worry is the layer of life. Uh, oftentimes people fight their circumstances so hard that that's all they do is fight their circumstances because the foundation is not firm. It is not strong. It, it, is, it is not able to withstand whatever the problems are that is going on. And problems come, the strength of the foundation is revealed. It is true in all of us. When, when, when life comes along and the circumstances is, are more than we can handle, there is an immediate transition to how strong our foundation is. And if it is not strong, we'll see it. If it is strong, we will see it. Because the nature of the foundation is revealed when hard times come. And when problems come, we will find out, no matter how well it's been hidden in life, no matter how people had to work to, to imitate or to present themselves as strong, as Christian, as uh, moral, and all those things, when the foundation is shook, uh, you'll find out whether or not it is the foundation of Jesus Christ or the foundation of human effort, of religion. Ruby's foundation was laid by Jesus Christ. Not by religion, not by her effort, not by morality. Ruby, a very, very good person. No question about that. You've testified about that today. Yet the foundation that she stood on was Jesus Christ. Give you two examples of why I know that to be true. Mike mentioned the hospital visits. For me, two hospital visits, seeing Ruby. The first one was when the diagnosis happened. Walked in, Jaime was there, uh, and they began to share with me what they discovered, what the doctors had discovered, the cancer and everything. And uh, Ruby began to talk. Now, uh, my knowledge of Ruby is not like yours, right? My relationship with her is not like yours yet. It would have been one day, but not as quite as good, but we would have got to know each other better. But I got everything I need to know about her foundation in that one visit, 30 minutes, let's say. She shared with me the gospel. She shared with me her perspective of the diagnosis. She shared with me what they were going to do and how they were going to do it. She talked about that everything is going to be okay because her life is in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right then, I thought. That's the way I want to be. That's the way I want to be in life. If I, want, if I get hit with something that is sobering as she's hit with, I want to handle that problem, that storm, like Ruby. And I, I just rejoiced, and I went, her foundation is Jesus Christ. If there's any question about her salvation, if there's any question about where her faith lies, it was answered for me. There was no question, by the way, but it was answered. It was clear. It was, it was plain to see. I heard faith. I heard the sovereignty of God. God is in charge. He knows about this. I heard peace. From her life. Peace. She was not fighting the circumstance. She was not agonizing over it. There wasn't this great anguish, which, quite frankly, of those whose foundation is not laid by Jesus Christ, 
in her situation, you would have heard great anguish. What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? We're going to try every procedure there is. We're going to do everything to, to cure this cancer. Didn't hear that from Ruby. It's in the Lord's hands. We'll do what they ask us to do. We'll go through the process. But whatever happens, it's in the Lord's hands. I saw calmness and peace. The only way there's going to be calmness and peace is if, if that foundation is strong. Second visit, cancer began to, to grow and, and complications developed. And she goes to the hospital and meet with the surgeons, the doctors and everybody. And uh, there, is a, there is a surgery that she can have, very, very difficult sur surgery, very risky surgery for them. And, um, you know, it, it could possibly have made things worse in the surgery. And they laid out all the facts. They laid out all the situation. And when I walked in the hospital, they had already made their decision. Jaime and Ruby had already made their decision that the Lord had directed them to let it go. To let it go. And they wouldn't do the surgery. Once again, Ruby said... It's just not, I, I, the time I have, I want to be as well as I can be. The time I have, I want to spend it with my family, my loved ones, my friends. Uh, it's just going to have to be in the Lord's hands. Jesus Christ was her foundation. And the doctor come in, or the PA, to get their decision. And, and being in the hospital a lot, I, I watch those doctors. When they come in, I just kind of, through the years, just kind of learn to watch their body language. And I, I shared with Jaime uh, that when Ruby said, no, sir, we, we just, we've elected not to do the surgery. The, the look on his face and the body language to me was one of relief. Now, I'm no expert in those kind of things, not a body language expert, but that's what I think. And Ruby was at peace. Now, only when Jesus Christ is your foundation can that happen. You're rich. You're rich. Now, you're hurting. You remember? The reason why we hurt and the reason why we grieve is because we have loved. And when you have loved a lot, you're going to hurt a lot when you lose your loved ones. And you've loved. And so the bouts with grief that you're going to experience, somehow or another go, it's because we loved her and she loved us. Her foundation was strong. She showed us what life is all about. She showed us and she told us. You have the blessing of knowing that there is absolutely no question where Ruby is right now. She's in the presence of Almighty God with her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And she is worshiping with all the people of all nations. And she is well and she is whole. Life for her now is going to be very long in eternity, but not in the, ter not in the, the moment. She will, it will seem in her mind that only a few days have gone by, and then she sees her loved ones. For you in here, for us here, it's going to seem like a longer time because that's the difference in the time between here and on the other side of eternity. But rejoice that our foundation was strong. She showed you how to believe, how to love, and how to live. You're wealthy, wealthy people. I'd like for us to join hands with Jaime and the family and allow me to pray for them. If y'all would all just kind of come together and we could lay hands on each other.